That was News in Business. Now for news around the world. In South Africa's troubled state-owned airline, Monday announced a restructuring process that could affect 900 44 employees and lead to job losses. South African Airways is deep in debt and has been struggling despite several government bailouts. Finance Minister Tito Mboweni announced in February, in February that the government would reimburse the company's 9.2 billion rand debt, which is around 620 million US dollars over the next three years. It said the carrier faced numerous challenges, including insufficient revenue, volatile fuel prices, and mounting debt. We'll now take a look at our special report today. Uganda and the Democratic Republic of Congo agreed to construct roads measuring 1,182 kilometers that would improve the linkage between the countries in a bid to address infrastructural bottlenecks and ease their cross-border trade and the whole region. This is part of the outcomes from the Democratic Republic of Congo's president's visit to Uganda, where bilateral talks between President Yori Museveni and and President Felix Shisekedi of the DRC were held on the 9th of November at the State House in Tebe. DR Congo total exports for 2018 stood at 533 million US dollars with formal trade standing at 221 million US dollars, whereas informal trade stood at 312 million US dollars, greater than the value of formal trade exports. However, Uganda thinks with great potential to boost these trade relations. Tonight, Paul Busharizi joins us to weigh in on these talks. So recently, the DRC Uganda Business Forum uh, concluded and uh, there were several agreements that were signed, among them uh, agreements to work on key road networks, that is within 24 months, the increased trade and investment. And then it is noted that uh, trade between the two countries as of May is over 532 million US dollars. And well, this, this, I, I had no idea, but that's good news. Paul, uh, is this not long overdue? Wasn't it like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's so, ago. so, so long overview. It's yes. so, so long overdue. Yeah. I think uh, it's one of the sad things about Africa that um, colonial boundaries, which are, have nothing to do with us, mm -hmm. are, are, are actually have become uh, physical barriers to our people. Right. So, for example, um, you know, there's no real serious telecom uh, communication links with, yes. with Congo. Mm. The roads on our side are, are, are good. There are no roads on the other side. And uh, the difference is just a, uh, an arbitrary line in the sand drawn by colonial people. The challenge is that um, Belgium, uh, Congo was uh, colonized by Belgium. Yes and uh, Uganda was colonized by the British, mm -hmm. so who were rivals at some point. So they, they, didn't, they didn't mesh uh, their, their communication things. So now, 50 plus years after independence, mm -hmm. we are beginning mm -hmm. to get around to doing this, which should have been long overdue. But the saddest thing for me also is that um, Congo, which is uh, about the size of Western Europe, yes, yes. Uh, has only 2,500 kilometers of tarmac road. Most only? of it, yes. Most of it very bad. And just to show you how bad that is, Uganda, which is uh, a tenth the size of Congo, has 5,000 kilometers of tarmac road. So you can see, first, uh, the sad, the tragedy of it all, when you don't have communication uh, roads, uh, com uh, transport networks, mm. nothing moves. That Absolutely. means the economy is dead. Um, this alone, this, the, the, the government had planned for three roads. Um, I think one of which was on point way to Beni. Uh, this is from Uganda into DRC. Yeah, into okay. DRC. Okay. But the three roads combined will bring online about 997 mm. kilometers of new mm. road, mm. which will increase the scope of uh, roads uh, in, 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 in Congo by a Congo third. By, yeah. But more importantly, it will mean that um, Ugandan goods can find a market in Congo and Congo goods can find a market yeah, in Uganda. True. So essentially, we're opening up a whole new market with this. 
wow. this initiative. It is, it's, I think it is a very wonderful initiative. Mm. And uh, we also note that both countries are facing a brunt of uh, some weird militias. Uh, we around the eastern know, the side eastern of the Congo, yes. yeah. And this, of course, I think has an effect on on trade and whatever. Yeah, of course, of course. I mean, also part of the the reason uh, you know you have you can have militias roaming around in eastern Congo is again the transport network yes. is is non-existent. So if you're security, you can't even move around to quell uh, uprisings. Uh, mm. uh, so this road network could help some to, to, to at least pacify the thing. But also, insecurity is caused by poverty, mm -hmm. uh, hopelessness. So if, if, if the people of Congo can uh, use these networks to, to sell their goods to market or produce more, because now there's a market you can produce more and therefore sell, mm -hmm. uh, it might also be a useful way to reduce the, the insecurity in the area. Well, so mm. what other good thing is coming out of all this? Well, um, you know, Congo is at the center of Africa, and I, I think it's, it's, it's not a stretch of imagination to say that because of Congo's chaos, uh, Africa doesn't meet its full potential. Things mm -hmm. from the north can't go easily to the south, and things from the east can't go easily to the west, because, you know, Congo is a mess. Mm -hmm. if, we can, if this can be the beginning of opening it oh, up yes, with okay. roads, uh, you know, if we do this, you know, Rwanda does its bit, Burundi, mm -hmm. and also does, South Sudan does its stuff, you know, Central Africa Republic, and Zambia, and uh, Angola, and, every, and we net, we get this, you know, we get this big giant in our midst up and running. It's, it's I mean, the, the potential for this continent will just be immense. Yeah, that, that actually reminds me of the uh, Africa, uh, that continental... Trade, uh, free trade area. Yeah, free trade mm. area. I think the way you painted the picture of, you know, the networks, yeah. I think that would ease Absolutely. Trade. Absolutely. Um, on the African continent in general, uh, we trade about, of all the things we produce, and all, all our trade, mm -hmm. only trade within the continent is 15%. All of the rest, 85%, goes out. Part of the reason, of course, is things like this, where there are no transport yes. networks yes. and stuff. Yes. So by opening up, you know, Congo to not only Ugandan market, but to the East African market, and uh, opening up the East African market to Congo, Mm. You'll have much more trade going on in here, and, and, and think, to be good I for the, the economies. President, the president mentioned that uh, it would help East Africa and then Africa. I think he yeah. he looked at a bigger picture as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, one of the scandals about the Congo is that um, they estimate that there are about twelve trillion dollars of natural resources in the Congo. This is everything from wood. Yes, and that's an estimate from from wood to 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 minerals yes. uh, to fishing even, uh, you know, to, to, to many, many, even agriculture, the potential of that place is just immense. But if you think about it, 12, 12 trillion, the GDP of the United States of America is about that 12 trillion. Mm -hmm. So you have 12 trillion sitting next door with wow, you. Wow, yes. Uh, and, 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 untapped. untapped. So imagine hmm. if you unlock all that, everyone will have a party. I don't know what they're waiting for. But well. I'm, I'm glad this is a start. Yes, this is a good start. Absolutely. Mm. Well, we look forward to, you know, <laughs> having a vibrant trade between the two uh, countries because really it's long overdue. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome.